In 2009, Stanford business professor Tina Selig split her class into groups and issued a challenge. She gave each group $5 and two hours to make the highest possible return on their money. What happened next will completely change the way you think about business and making money. Let's dive right into it. When given the challenge, most of the groups thought in a fairly linear, logical way, probably the way that most of us would think if we were issued this same challenge. They took the $5, bought some low-cost items, and then started a pretty simple system of bartering, trading up the items to try to get to something of slightly greater value on the back end of this two hours. Those groups made a pretty modest return on the initial $5. A few groups realized that the $5 offered as initial capital was something of a distraction. Instead of worrying about the $5, they simply thought of ways that they could make money using the two hours that they had been given. One group set up a bike tire refilling station just outside of Stanford's business school and made a pretty good amount of money during that two hours. One group who did even better made and then sold reservations at the hottest restaurants in town and in San Francisco. That group made a decent chunk of money during the two hours. But the winning group took an entirely different approach. They realized that the $5 and the two hours were both a distraction. The most valuable asset they had was the presentation time at the end of the challenge. Each group was going to get a 30 minute presentation slot at the end of the challenge, during which they would present the results of what their team had come up with. The winning group realized that that presentation time was the most valuable asset in their arsenal. To capitalize on it, they did something very unique they started calling a bunch of local tech companies, realizing that those tech companies would find it valuable to have a chance to recruit in front of this group of Stanford Business School students. They ended up selling their presentation time as an advertising slot to these local companies, netting $650 on the $5 initial capital, a monstrous return. While most of the groups had thought in linear logical terms and generated linear logical outcomes, the winning group had thought differently. They had come up with a creative solution and generated the asymmetric upside as a result. Thinking differently is an unlock for life. It's what's going to allow you to unlock asymmetric outcomes, those 10, 100, and 1,000 X outcomes that we're all seeking in life. There are really two types of challenges that we face in life. Low stakes challenges, which have lower potential and more linear rewards. Decisions around these lower stakes challenges are usually reversible. And high stakes challenges, higher potential, asymmetric rewards. The decisions here are generally not as easily reversible. With lower stakes challenges, given the potential is limited and the rewards are generally linear, we typically wanna take more shortcuts and use heuristics to make faster decisions. But with higher stakes challenges, we want to think differently. We want to slow down and take the time to come up with the creative solutions that allow us to capitalize and achieve those asymmetric outcomes. Let's generalize the learnings from the Stanford Business School experiment to come up with three steps to think differently in your next high stakes challenge. Step one, avoid the distraction. In this challenge, the $5 was the trap. Most of the groups immediately anchored their thinking around the $5 because it was presented to them. That was a trick because it was being positioned by Professor Selig as the thing that they needed to leverage in order to generate their return. It was really just a distraction. The $5 didn't matter at all and the winning group completely ignored it. Now, to be clear, it was entirely possible that the winning idea would have involved the $5. But by narrowing your entire field of vision to only those solutions that did involve the $5, you were narrowing significantly the field of potential solutions. When faced with a challenge with the potential for asymmetric outcomes, the first thing to do is make sure that you avoid the distraction. There will always be an obvious solution that is simple, clear, and entirely wrong. Step two, ask foundational questions. Socratic questioning is the process of asking and then answering questions that allow you to vet underlying assumptions, scrub away false ones, and stimulate critical thinking in yourself and with your group. 
To put it into action, follow this simple process. Start with open-ended questions, propose ideas based on those questions, probe those ideas with progressive questioning, and repeat until the best ideas are developed. Here's a simple breakdown of how you might implement Socratic questioning in practice. Start by asking questions. What's the problem you're really trying to solve? Is it the right problem? Oftentimes, we waste a lot of time and energy focusing on the wrong problem. Make sure you identify the right one first. Next, propose your current thinking on the problem. What is your standing hypothesis? Why do you believe that to be true? What are the origins of that thinking? Open the floor for questioning. Why do you think these things? Is the thinking too vague? What's it based upon, really? Start to challenge that original thinking. How do you know these things are true? How would you know if you were wrong? Identify all of your team's source beliefs on a problem. Be ruthless in evaluating their integrity and validity. Evaluate the evidence used to support the thinking. Where did it come from? What concrete evidence do you really have? Is there any unseen evidence that you've been ignoring systematically? Develop a perspective on the consequences of being wrong. How costly would a mistake be? Is the decision easily reversible or are you going to be stuck with it? You always need to understand the stakes. Evaluate potential alternatives. What alternative beliefs might exist? If you did have an alternative belief, why might that be? What do those people know that you don't? Evaluate all of those alternatives on their merits and ask these same questions about them. After doing that zoom in, zoom way out. What was your original thinking? Was it correct? Where have you shifted? Where have you scrubbed away some of your underlying assumptions that proved incorrect? What conclusions can you draw from the process about any systematic errors in your underlying thinking? As you can see, Socratic questioning takes time. It shouldn't be used on low stakes, easily reversible decisions. But when you encounter a high stakes decision with potential for asymmetric rewards in your life, career, or business, you should undertake the process of Socratic questioning to get to the best possible solution. Step three, select the highest leverage approach. Once you've gone through step one, avoid the distraction, and step two, the process of Socratic questioning, you're ready to select a path. The winning group selected the approach of selling the presentation time as the one that they thought had the highest potential and the highest likelihood of success. You can do the same. Slow down and select the path that you think has the highest potential for asymmetric rewards. This Stanford business experiment offers a real life example of the power of thinking differently. The next time you face a decision with the opportunity for nonlinear rewards, follow that three-step process and you will harness the power of thinking differently. Avoid the distraction. Identify the true assets at your disposal. Walk through the process of Socratic questioning. Vet your underlying assumptions and stimulate critical thinking. And select the highest leverage approach, the one most likely to lead to those asymmetric, non-linear outcomes. Always remember, creative, non-linear, asymmetric thinking leads to creative, non-linear, asymmetric outcomes. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this, you'll love some of my other videos, which break down the ideas to help you build a high-performing, healthy, wealthy life. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, until next time, stay curious.